Okay, my name is Justine Savi. Today is July 30th, 2017, and I'd like to do an end of season video for external spaces 631 and 636. Uh, I have been excavating this open space since 2016. Um, it is a large multi-phased open space that is uh, situated between a cluster of buildings in the North Shelter. It is um, usually defined by uh, its limitations changed by uh, the buildings that are surrounding it. So as new buildings are constructed into it, the limits change. Currently, I am stood in space 636, which is the earliest space that we have reached um, in this area. And everything else that is higher than me is considered space 631. The goals for my excavation uh, were to understand more about the use and development of open spaces at Chattahoyuk through time. And um, in order to do that, I decided to do a high resolution excavation, which really means that um, while I'm still doing the single context Chattahoyuk research project, um, following those uh, methodologies in excavation and recording, um, I've just uh, imposed a one by one meter grid onto this open space in order to have more spatial temporal control and better understand the types of activities and their sizes that are taking place here. Um, in addition to sort of um, understanding what goes on in an open space, which uh, is not just middening accumulation or the accumulation of midden deposits, uh, there is a wide variety of activities that we've, uh, we knew and have now um, confirmed that actually go on, such as food processing, everything from um, processing of plant materials, such as dehusking uh, grains and such things, as well as uh, processing um, uh, either primary butchering of animals or post-consumption waste management of animal um, uh, faunal material and animal bones. Um, their sizes vary through time. Um, and, um, and this actually is sort of, uh, these activities happened in a relatively unstructured way in that they don't often uh, repeat in the same place. Their sizes vary through time. When we've had things like fire spots and fire pits, um, even when they occur in the same uh, relative space geographically, they tend to vary um, in what they in the deposits that they contain and the functions that they had. Um, one question that I really wanted to uh, sort of better explore was whether these spaces were used communally and whether or not that changed through time. And um, there's been some evidence to suggest that they are actually communal spaces. Um, one is that um, buildings around them seem to be built into them um, over time, meaning that there's not really one social unit that has control of the space that dictates who is allowed to build here and who is not. Um, uh, furthermore, as I said before, the sort of unstructured use of the space um, also suggests that um, this is not something that is just being used for one purpose over time. Um, again, if you can um, see the sort of the section here and the uniformity of the of these large deposits, you can see that there, in addition to just regular weather uh, weathering processes, there is also um, an active maintenance of the space. While all of that is pointing to the fact that these spaces may be used communally, there are also um, sort of individual attempts to. Um, to enclose some spaces. So for example, behind me, there's a clay enclosure that we've excavated, which contained a number of localized deposits. And so, um, which may point to sort of the need to appropriate a bit of space for a specific activity. Um, so um, in that sense, uh, a lot of, uh, it's still a bit up, uh, <laughs> um, it's still, um, to be decided how exactly the space is used, of course, the, um, the material analysis will have a lot to contribute to these questions. And of course, um, I would like to look at the space in light of all of the other, or in, uh, within the context of all of the other open spaces that have been excavated at Chattahoyuk since um, the 1993 excavations began. And um, yes, that's it, I think. <laughs>